Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Well, we all watched the biggest game in sports last night, and I personally can't wait. For Kevin Durant to become a Raptor. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be pretty good. Pretty I think good. it's going to be great. All the, honestly, he's going to opt out this year. I mean, we, we could keep DeMar, get Kevin, his, put $50 his, million dollars into two people. His team lost. Mm-hmm. He was referenced in views from the six. Yep. It's basically happening. I think so. I mean, personally, that's kind of what I, I was thinking and hoping. Hey, also coming I, to Toronto, Sidney Crosby. I think we're going to get LeBron, but whatever. Oh, well, he's opting out too, isn't exactly. he? Exactly. No, isn't he opting out next year so we can get 35 million? He probably million? opt out, sign another one year, resign again. Yeah. So. Hashtag Sid Braun did you know 2016. That, did you know that the NBA salary cap, because of this deal with ESPN, is going up to $92 million pretty soon? Oh my god! And, then, and that's going to be raised again to about a hundred and something. Yeah. So. And then the Leafs become an NBA team and run <laughs> yeah, over really, everybody. really, everybody. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's going to be crazy money. Hey, by the way, Steve Dangle, oh. you just got off the plane a couple hours ago. I did. Not even a couple, an, an hour and a half ago. Yeah, and I got picked up by a handsome dude. Now, before, before, I uh, we we ask you how it was going to your first playoff game. Going to your first Stanley Cup game, which is amazing, which we have all dreamed of doing. I just want to run things down and how it went last night in Pittsburgh with a very, very special call. Just energy. <laughs> How are you not completely jacked after that? Hockey Night in Canada, the Punjabi edition, is the greatest. What do you the want? The greatest. That? You want that or scores? Benino. I want I want Benino, Benino, Benino. I want Benino, 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 Benino. It would have been better had he said Benito, because it was a Benito ben- goal. Benito. Ah. But with a Butenito. Butenito. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or or as the half French announcer says, boo! Nito. <laughs> no. He got, no. He got a boo. He got a boo. No. Steve hasn't slept going. much, by the no, way. No. How, much, how much have you slept in the last couple of days? Uh, well, you know I can't sleep before flights, so zero hours. Right. And then uh, last night, three and a half. So the, the Pittsburgh Penguins pull one out in the very first San Jose Sharks Stanley Cup final game in history. You mm-hmm. were there. You witnessed uh, history last night. I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah. yeah so you, you saw something that can never be repeated. It will never wow. be done again. You were there. That's it. No one can mess with it. I was there. I and was down there. You're one of... 18,000 people, I think, that that have seen it. Something so you're like in lines, limited yeah. edition, sir. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm going to hang me on the wall. I, I would. I would. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we obviously, you know, we saw the game. If you didn't see the highlights, it was a pretty close game. But what I want to start with, though, is is this whole thing coming together. So a guy named Mike Darnay. Yes. From Pittsburgh, who writes a blog called Pensburg. Yes, uh, it's the uh, Penguins... SB Nation site. Right. Now he... It's like PPP. He's a... I'm sure Mark Madden's a huge fan because he's a blogger. And <laughs> Mark Madden loves bloggers. I apparently was the floor above Mark Madden for a while Were you? I just didn't have the chance to go see. <gasps> I, oh, I you should have uh, got a picture. I, I would have felt so disingenuous though being like, hey man, big fan. Did you have a uh, press pass? <laughs> With the no. sports crew? No. No. Not at all? Okay. <laughs> no, no, in fact... They pretended not to know Steve yeah, down there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The unwashed. <laughs> the, He's uh, merely a blogger. That's mm. just all. Uh, Friedman walked by me and... Uh, he just went whoop, and just spat on my shoes. He, um, walked, he kept, kept walking. He did take a nice picture of you wearing a Pittsburgh Penguins t-shirt. Yeah, and you know what's great about that is no one gave me any grief for it. No. 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 You know what? If someone pays for a ticket for you to go to the Stanley Cup final, you wear the shirt of the team they cheer for, okay? Well, and now I was I asked Steve that. I said, did you actually cheer for the, like when the Nick Benino goal went in? Sorry, the Benino, Benino, Benino goal Benino, went Benino, in. Benino, Benino, Benino. If, when that happened, you, you did cheer for it, right? Yes, I did. Because... It the pop the pop in that building I I honestly like it was so loud I think that that was number two behind Crosby's golden goal in terms of like goals I've witnessed live really just 
explosion and they're all actually by the way you saw Crosby's golden goal live oh no big deal <laughs> oh like everyone Steve's caught no breaks in his life <laughs> no, like, no. <laughs> you know, literally the hardest life ever what's, what's great about this game is it's just you know it's it's me finally getting my due right yeah. you know? mm-hmm. it's me finally you getting deserve a, this a break <laughs> so okay so you're 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 at the game you are cheering for the Pittsburgh Penguins and I and I just I want to say here's why that's bad all right <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, okay. Okay, okay. Well, it's not that it's bad for you, per se, but but now you've enraged two fan bases because the San Jose Sharks fans hate you because you didn't cheer for San Jose. What about James, Steve? Right. James Reimer, your Nick boy. Spalling. Yeah, and Roman Polak, the centurion. You know what? Roman Polak had a decent game, I thought. I don't know. I didn't see the numbers, but he. Uh, I've come around a little bit on him. So San, San Jose, you're not cheering for San Jose, and you are cheering for Pittsburgh, which means dangle jinxing Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So and you haven't enraged... even mentioned the Leaf fans I've enraged. Oh, well, yeah, by cheering for something other than the Leafs. So were, there's troisième. Were people actually mad at you? I don't think they were legitimately mad at me. A few people tweeted, Trajar! And, I mean, temporarily, yes, they were right, but Okay. <laughs> the, the Leafs finished last place. We all know where I'm going to, you know, honey, I'm coming home to you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, whatever. Shut up. I got a free ticket. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so I want to talk about the moment you got off the plane. So, you, cause yes. you, you, you booked these tickets. I was talking to you and Mrs. Dangle as you were booking the tickets Yes. and it was awesome because like you could just hear the excitement in Steve's voice and, and I, I'm going to a playoff game. Yeah. And I was like, God, I'm just so damn jealous. Like I'm, Totally jealous and not afraid to admit that. It's amazing. Um, so you, you land, and what happens to you? Well, I'm greeted by Mike. Mm-hmm. He he gets me uh, into into his car. You know, we were, were. Did you not meet an Iggy along the way? Well, we're he we drive to where we're going, okay. and the first non Mike Darnay person I met in Pittsburgh was a lady walking a golden doodle, oh. like my golden doodle. And but he was was he be- was it a better dog? Then Iggy? It was it was shaggier, so it wasn't Twiggy. Oh, wow. So True. there's that. True. Okay. So there okay. is that. It must have been so hot. But it was jumping up on me because, you know, golden doodles are very excitable. And this lady, I knew the trip was gonna be good. This is how it started. Done! <laughs> done! Get done! I thought she was said it exactly like that. I thought she was kidding, putting it on. People actually talk like that. <laughs> yeah. Done! Get done! Don Tan. I heard a couple of people say Don Tan. I was just listening to people and going. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was, I was being exactly all the people from the zoo um, that I remember uh, hating when I worked there. There, Every now and then I would see like Americans, like typically like younger like students. Mm-hmm. They would just stand there and like wait for Canadians to walk by and say things. And then they would just go. <laughs> you, see, you're upset, you said a boot. You said a boot. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, okay, I swear this happens. I actually, uh, w- somebody that I know in the States, a friend of mine, he actually swears up and down that I say a boot. And I say, well, how do you say it? And he goes, about. We say about. And he's from Seattle. And they have no accent there. I'm like, I am saying about. And he's like, it's about. 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 And that's, that's what it is in the States, apparently. Anyway, so you, so you, you, you hang out with Mike for the day. What'd you guys do? Well, first I asked him, I go, do I talk funny? Like, will, will people know? He's like, yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Yeah, he, uh, oh my God. Jeez, what did we do? He took me all around uh, the Spurg. He, um, uh, there's this cool tunnel you go through. So the airport is like kind of like in the middle of the woods, pretty much. So is Pittsburgh. Uh, but you go through this tunnel and surprise, Pittsburgh, this big city. And it's a beautiful, like movie-like um, kind of reveal. Um, we went walking. We went to the Primanti brothers. We had some food that was Primanti. Primanti. I just before you get angry tweets, I just okay. want to. <laughs> so we went to the was it Primanti? Okay, so we went to the Primanti. We went to the Primo brothers. The Primo, yeah. And uh, had uh, had some sandwiches that were bad for our hearts and so livers good. and such. Then we had some beers. Yeah. Uh, we met Leah Blasco, who I think we had mentioned one or two podcasts ago. Yeah, she was telling us about the hot dog stand or the hot dog shop outside of uh, outside of the, uh, the arena. Also, uh, Steve the Yinzer, if you've ever seen that guy. Yeah. You? Yes. Uh-huh. We met. I met Steve the Yinzer. Amazing. He met Steve the Dangle and haver of free things. <laughs> right. That's me. That would be your night name. That 
it would be my Steve name. the Dangle, haver of free things. <laughs> Steve of House Dangle. No, Adam. No. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we went to Point Park. Saw the big fountain. Point State Park. Point State Park. Okay. Whatever. Point Park. I'm not from there. <laughs> the thing with the big fountain and water. And you can run kayaks and have a good day. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, I saw a, a boat with a name that I just caught myself. I should probably save for the online okay. portion. All right. Fair. Uh, and then we met Ashley Chase, who is a TV reporter down there. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Ashley that, is. That's, I've seen her tweet. I've before. seen her. Yep. Yeah. What's up, Ashley? Yeah, and then uh, we went down to the game. So the game itself, you walk in. What's what's it like to walk into a Stanley Cup Finals game? Oh my god! Well, first of all, the con- they call it console. I've always thought it was console. <laughs> Everybody calls it console outside. Maybe they call it console there. They all call it console. I don't know. I thought it was even in the video games. They call it console, don't they? I think you're right. Wow. Maybe we're all getting they it wrong. They also say yins and yuns, so I yeah. don't know, maybe they're wrong. <laughs> yins guys. <laughs> it's like that Louis C.K. thing about Boston. He's like, there is no Boston accent. It's just a metropolis of people pronouncing everything wrong. <laughs> it's true. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, so we go there. It's not... Okay, so you know the Air Canada Centre. I'm sure a lot of the people here know the Air Canada Centre. And your arena is probably like this too. There's like hallways going into your section, right? You'll walk over to section 107, and there's a little hallway um, that that leads you to 107. Sure. And con- console, console, it's just all kind of open. Oh. It's all kind of open. So if you go out into the concourse and you want to buy a shirt or you want to order some food, you want to order a hot dog, throw it down to the bench to fill, you can see. You can just see everything the entire Which is time. a smart decision it is a smart decision uh and one special thing about this game for me as a canadian that i didn't realize until i got on the plane it was memorial day <coughs> I, I, my tongue kind of stopped working there for a sex memorial I'll say it again. day memorial day right <laughs> i've been up for like 48 hours um so americans you might not realize that you do this but you definitely do this i love going to all american Sporting events. I, I don't think I've been to very many, but events where you don't have to sing the Canadian anthem. It's like, okay, okay, the Canadians are gone. We can turn the America up to 11. Yeah. Let's go. And the rockets yeah. run. And just, you know, everyone's firing off cannons in camo and-, <laughs> and crazy light show. And oh, yeah, they, they, they just crank that right up. But I, again, I keep using the wrestling term, the pop, the pop of this building. It's so much louder than the ACC. The fans are louder. Well, to the be goal fair, horn it's the can be heard from space. It's the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, and yeah. the Leafs <laughs> haven't had a good team in eleven years. That is true. And you know what? I've never been around for. I've never witnessed live a Leafs playoff goal. I have. It's loud. It's loud. It's very loud. I don't. I listen. I don't doubt that it was extraordinary, like like deafeningly loud in in Pittsburgh. It was. Actually, it matters, right? It, it was kind of scary. Almost because, like I said, like I wasn't really cheering for them. I was happy when they scored or whatever. But the people who were really cheering for them all around me, they stood up instantly like Olympians. Ah! And and what would happen is I would just be engulfed, and it would just be darkness all around me, and I couldn't see anything. I'm like, ah, okay, I better stand up and see what's going on. It was it was nuts, and the highlights don't do it justice. Uh, you said it was a close game. Score wise, it was definitely a close game. Uh, but Pittsburgh really, really ran the Sharks show in the first. I don't know what happened in the second period, and the and Pittsburgh just went right back to it in the third. I think the shots were forty-one to twenty-five, something like that. And I think forty-one twenty-six. Forty-one twenty-six. Wow. Pittsburgh got a little bit of bulletin board material before the series even began. Uh, I think there were 21 writers that NHL.com polled. 17 of the 21 picked the Sharks to win the series. Wow. One writer even saying that the uh, that the uh, Sharks would win in five. But the Sharks... Well, I mean, they still could. I mean, they still could. <laughs> they, yeah, they mathematically still could. But at least on home ice, when the Penguins have you know a couple little advantages there, the Sharks... Don't have an answer for that speed. They don't. Um, Thornton's a great player. Doesn't he? Can't counter that speed. Um, no, I, I'm not sure how many players on um, San Jose can. And another thing about live hockey. Someone actually said Sidney Crosby can learn from Jonathan Drouin. <laughs> 
Wait, you were there? Remember? Th- no, 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 no. It's you see Sidney Crosby p- play live, and the ludicrous things that are said mm. about Crosby oh. become that much more ludicrous. He's the first, second, and third best player on the ice. Everyone else happens to be in the NHL with him. He's unbelievable. He go and watch the second goal. I know it was Connor Sheary's, but th- I mean, at what point do you just give Sidney Crosby like an honorary goal assist? Like you come up with a new stat for him. You can't knock him off the puck. His butt's too big. Uh, he's, his balance is too good. His hand-eye coordination is too good. He's the best player on the planet. Period. Period. End of story. Period. And you can you can just tell watching him live and on the biggest stage. What happened? I thought he wasn't a leader. I thought he couldn't do it despite having done it. Well, he can't grow a beard. So can't grow a beard. Grows a better one than Taves, sort of, maybe. Not really. Wow, yeah. He and he and Taves are really at the basement of the league when it comes to that. Bad no. bad beards. Bad. No. By the way, it is Consol. It because is. Because it was the company was called Consolidation Energy. Oh. Yeah. So it's Consol. Con- Consol. Consol. Well, congratulations Consol. to Pittsburgh uh, <laughs> and, and all of the surrounding areas for getting that right and the rest of us. Congratulations Shame. on pronouncing your first word. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> now sit down. Sit down. Does your city have black and yellow teams? You pronounce things funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They Done. all kind of lined up, didn't they? Yes, they certainly did. Um, so you, you, you leave the game. They've obviously won. The Benino goal must have been pretty cool. Benino, 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 Benino. So you leave the game. What's it like outside? It's just packed. Just packed everywhere. Um, and it's a Monday night and it's Memorial it's Day holiday. weekend. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but people still have to go to work on the Tuesday. So they, they don't have... I think Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment was really, really clever with what they did with Maple Leaf Square and Jurassic Park or whatever Ford thing it's called. Um, because it's one big screen... On a wall, there's a big circled off area, not and, a whole lot of cars. And they own it. it. And they own it. And there, there's a nice spillover area where you can go and stand, even if you don't get into the square where you're not blocking off traffic. In Pittsburgh, they had a big screen set up, and basically people just set up lawn chairs up and down the street. <laughs> and, you know, I'm there like three hours before the game. I'm like, oh, there's about 200 people here already. You know, we go somewhere, have a few beers or whatever. We walk back across it, like uh, probably a thousand. There's wow, all of them with lawn chairs. Yep. So there's just thousands of people sitting outside the arena, all with lawn chairs and other crap. And that'll be the only one. Else, they'll get a fine. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Seriously. So I guess Pittsburgh. I was asking someone about that. I guess Pittsburgh just pays. Because I, I guess you, I guess you can pay. And and. Uh, okay. Okay. So Gary Bettman was there. I should have asked him. You should have. Did you meet him? I was a stone's throw away from him. No, I haven't met him. I don't really want to. I don't know. There's some people I've said too <laughs> well, many. You don't na- want to meet your heroes. No. <laughs> yeah. There's too many people. There, there, there's some people I've said too many nasty things about where I could like genuinely shake their hand and not like feel bad about myself. Did anybody <laughs> while you were down there, and I mean this honestly. Okay. Because I have gone down there since uh, I go to Pittsburgh every year at least once. Um, and... I've gone down down there and I've looked for anyone, someone, anyone, who sounds like Mark Madden. Well, uh, I I could tell you one. It's uh, 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 (laughs) the super genius uh, on on the radio, Adam. (laughs) How about you look up where the studio is, you POS? (laughs) How about you come down and see, all right, no, okay, we'll lock the door. Because you smell and you're creepy. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody, Nobody sounds like him down there. Nobody. He's a transplant, isn't he? Where is he? Yeah. He is, but I would have thought... I would have thought... From Badassville. Oh, what? Yeah, I wonder what? where he's from. Straight from wonder the WWF. Where from. Straight from wherever was Sting's from. Was he WWF from. or was he WCW? WCW. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why yeah. I said Sting. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the whole experience just seems like it was so cool. And you oh. guys, and you had a sausage in Phil's honor. I did. I got one at Consol. Mm-hmm. I got a sausage, and I had it for Phil. Man, dude. <laughs> so... Pittsburgh is not close. It's far. But I go there, and so many people walked up to me, and they're like, hey, hey, are you Steve? Hey, say hi to Phil. (laughs) Hey, buddy, say hi to Phil. Love the podcast, man. Have you met M yet? You going to meet M? Hey, say hi to Phil. Where's Adam? Where's Jesse? 
Oh, I couldn't. Wow, well, whatever. Uh, tell him say hi to Phil. You take a picture with Phil and you show him. <laughs> oh as God. if you could just take a picture with Phil. Yeah. So, yeah. As Phil, if that was available. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Um. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's I. I. Oh. It, it's it was, Steve actually said that same thing to me in an elevator earlier today, as I was picking him up, Jesse, and he's like, he's like, people listen to this show in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. It's like think yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> like I realize that's not ridiculous. Like, right, that's not that ridiculous. I get no. You know what? We're young enough to get the internet. We're old enough to still be fascinated by it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, wow, people from a flight away. Right, you know what I mean. Would have never heard this. Never. No. I mean, I don't even know what, what we would have done without the internet. We could have never. How could we have ever done a show? I'd still be writing out predictions for the Leafs lineup next year on receipt paper in the Toronto Zoo ticket booth. That's what I'd be doing. I think Ponikarowski will be on the first line left wing this year. <laughs> I think Grabowski is ready for a... Uh, no, I think Nick Antropov. Alex Steen's ready for the big time. There you go. Yeah. There you, but Maybe they bring Pierre Hedin back from Sweden. Oh, oh yeah. Gross. Yeah, some names, man. Gross. Some names. Well, we have our very first Stanley Cup final watcher. That is yes. amazing. That <laughs> is amazing. A Stanley Cup final Attendance haver. That is a that's a bucket list one for me. I want to see that. Oh, dude, I want to go to the Super Bowl and I want to see a Stanley Cup Finals game. Actually, I, I want to see the Stanley Super Cup Bowl is a waste of time. I have heard the same thing. Yeah, it's not I worth still want to go at least once just to say it was a waste of time. Okay, it you know, seems... I'd rather waste my money to find out it was a waste of money mm-hmm. than not go and it be something else. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah it, I, it seems like it's way too up its own backside. It's a TV event. That's yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're right. And you know, I think I think that was what's fun about and, and this is way this is the way it should be. When a final in a sporting ga- like a, a league doesn't doesn't change the way the league conducts business, I think it's done the right way. Do you know what I mean? Like when we have a guest on this show, and this is this is a this is a Adam Wilde comparison, so follow the dot with me here. Oh boy. When we have a guest on this show, it's still this show, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that to yeah. me, is the mark of a good show, is that you have, the show doesn't change even though X name is on it, right? To me, the sign of a good sporting league, um, and I, I do love watching the Super Bowl, although it is sort of a letdown each and every year. <laughs> it's always the games before leading up to the Super Bowl Except that are better. For Patriots, the Giants. Yeah. The, Patriots, the, the, Giants yeah, was amazing. Patriots, Seahawks. But, but for, no, no, Patriots, Seahawks was good oh, too, yeah, man. Yeah. And I'm not even a football fan. True, that, that was, was good. That was unreal. Um, yeah. But the, I, I feel like, the Super Bowl, like there's the NFL mm-hmm. and like in the NFL games, and there's the playoff games, and then there's Super Bowl, which yeah. is not even a league. It's, it's just, just it's, all, it's just a thing. I think the neutral Different site thing. ruins things too. Like you don't get home What's fans. What's with that? Yeah, I don't get Why? that. Well, I guess the they don't idea... want it played in the snow, especially. They don't want. They had a New York one two years ago or last. And year. what a mess it and was! It what a fun. mess! <laughs> so you what? Try to get to the Giants Stadium yeah. for the Super Bowl on the subway. And and all the terrorist stuff that the Americans have deal, to deal with. So to get into the stadium, uh, you're hours in line. Yeah. Hours. Uh, oh, my God. You can't walk into an NFL stadium right now, or at least in Pittsburgh you can't, with a, with a normal purse. You have to get a, you have to buy an NFL-branded clear purse so they can see. What? Yeah. My, <laughs> Caprice and I have Steelers clear purses at home wow. so that she can, <laughs> she can carry her stuff in because they don't want you to smuggle a bomb in. Why do you go to sporting events? To have fun and enjoy yourself. Does that sound like you're having fun and enjoying but yourself? But Steve, security. Steve. Oh. Steve, weapons of mass destruction. We, okay, good. You're right. And now we all live uncomfortably and <laughs> yeah. don't like the Super Bowl Yeah, anymore. so we're let, like, we're, Listen to the conversation we're having. The Super Bowl's lame? What? Yeah. What did that happen? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't, they don't want it pay, played in, in cold temperatures if they can avoid it. Mm-hmm. So poor Green Bay's never going to get it. But I also thought the reason that it was traveled around is because they wanted to make it this big event. And it's a yeah. huge... Um, it's a huge money maker for every city that it's in. Like I know it was in, when it was in Indianapolis, which is w- wasn't it recently? Yeah, yeah. yeah, because they got a new stadium, so they had the Super Bowl. So yeah, yeah it helps them pay for the stadium. It yeah. helps. I mean, that's why it was in Dallas when they spent a billion dollars on their stadium, mm-hmm. right? They wouldn't have done that had the Super Super Bowl not been promised to them. And I think that's the reason they do it. It's a huge event for the city. That's a week and a half, two weeks long, and brings in millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's a financial decision. Absolutely. Yeah. And it grows the game. Even if, like, if you have that, like, let's say you have it in Tampa Bay, right? Where the Which Buccaneers. They do often. Yeah, and the Buccaneers have been terrible for a while. Um, 
they still have this this financial support now, and it supports a team that's not in it because rarely does a team get home field advantage at the Super Bowl because it's actually never happened. Oh, no, home it happens team has in the ever CFL played in their own home stadium. I'm Super sorry, Bowl. I'm sorry, it happens in the CFL. <laughs> Are we not going to acknowledge that it happens what? in the CFL? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> because there might be a what is it? A one in four chance that you <laughs> that you make the championship. In the Careful, CFL? someone will send a passive aggressive tweet. Some someone who plays oh, in that goodness. league who, dude. <laughs> I don't. I don't even remember the guy who said that. Literally, you know what I'm a, talking about. It's right? supposed to be a neutral site. Sorry, it's, it's a one in a four and a half chance that you're going to make this the Grey Cup. There's nine teams. My God, all the perseverance. Like, what are the odds? And, and what are the odds you will rise to the top? And Saskatchewan has still only won four. <laughs> And it's been around for what, like hundred plus 100 years? years? Can we hold the province, like like the not, that the, is not the, the team, the province? Wow, Are you that's bad. Saskatchewan is what keeps the CFL going. Saskatchewan is the New York Yankees of the CFL. <laughs> Except and yet without they're the, the winning. Of yeah, the they're the Leafs of the CFL. Yeah. yeah. They're the big money maker. They're the big ratings draw. They're everything. Wow. Passionate fans and womp womp. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that I, and I know we got to go to break here for a second. Yeah. Why is this it? This is not this, how I saw my Pittsburgh segment. <laughs> what's the psychology behind us? Those who cheer like like us, New York Mets fans, New York's New York Knicks fans. Because I'm from here. Is it is that yeah. what it is? Is yeah. it high populous area? But but the thing is, I notice with teams that consistently let their fan bases down, there seems to be a sort of rabid. Yeah, well, I don't care. I love them anyway. You know, whereas Yankees fans, when the Yankees suck, they don't feel it. Mm. I've been to Yankees games where it hasn't been sold out. I wasn't Derek Jeter's last season wasn't sold out. It probably was. They just didn't go. Maybe they didn't go. Like I was in the outfield. Towards, it was very empty. Yeah. Mm. That happens towards the end of the season for the Leafs. For example, yeah. like yeah. I remember a few years ago, I went to a Leafs Oilers game and I was like, what? What's going on? This year was a little bad. Even. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. And the year before, and even la- last year was even worse. Remember we went to yeah. the Islanders game. It's like nobody there. Game, Man, yeah. if I, if like, okay, I'm a passionate Leafs fan, so I'm going no matter what, unless I have a podcast to record, damn it. But, uh, geez, we, you could have just I know, told I us the next Nealand day. First Steve's game. life is um, so hard. <laughs> Look at the decisions he has podcast, to make, Jesse. You know? I don't think the average person has to make that is a tough decision. I will give you that, Steve. That I am not being sarcastic. I I would have made it the other decision for sure. I'd have been Real like difficult. I'd have been like, screw you guys. I'm Real going to see difficult. Neilander's first game. Anyway, sorry, you were gonna say. Well, yeah, but like the casual fan, and maybe I got kids at home, and I got work in the morning, and do I really want to go? Like, do, do I really want to be getting home at 11:30 or 12 to watch the Leafs? Lose and the Leafs lose to the Hurricanes. Yeah, Ugh. <laughs> I think yeah. I'll stay home, watch Game of Thrones, go to bed. Yeah, fair. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, we got to go to break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about how anybody, how just about anybody, can be a GM in the NHL. Oh, is this our new segment? Well, well, we'll get to it. Ooh. Sportsnet five ninety, the fan. This is the Steve Dangle podcast. All right. So I didn't have time. Well, first off, I should say, podcast is brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts. And what's on the inside is pizza. That's correct. Oh, I had some delicious Panago on the weekend. Did you? Nice pepperoni pizza. Oh, Oh, yes. What a nice awesome. weekend. Yeah. Sometimes it's straight ahead pan- or, uh, pepperoni. Well, I guess Panago Pizza too, but a pepperoni Panago Pizza. I got the, pepperoni the real Panago Pizza. Yeah, you know. the real PPP. <laughs> pepperoni Panago Pizza. Um, is, is the best option. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just want to do that. People are like, oh, I want blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you know. No, screw you. And they almost look at you like, what are you, in grade eight? I'm like, yeah, my taste buds are in grade eight. Screw you. You can have your artichoke dip. I don't care. All right? (laughs) Sometimes it's appropriate to just chill out in your sweatpants. Sometimes it's appropriate to just have a nice pepperoni pizza. And not feel bad about it. Just saying. Especially if it's from Panigo. Now, we, we, I, I feel like this needs to become a new feature. Is it just? But I feel like we need to, like, I, I, I wonder if, if our audience wants this. So I'm, I'm going to put this out there and I want you to tell us over Twitter and Reddit and however else you reach out to us. I get a bunch of people Snapchatting me. It's Adam Wilde if you want to follow or whatever it is. However you talk to us, tell us whether you want this to be a new feature, which is, and I already said it before, anybody can be an NHL general manager because we can have like a whole thing made. Shouts to Ryan Lambert, by the way. Oh, because it's it's really hits. I think, or was it? I think it was. Yeah, no, it was him. Uh-huh. It was definitely him from the actual PPP. 
No, he's from Yahoo Sports. Oh. And the evil Greg Wyshynski clan. The, the Wyshynski Empire. Mm. 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 Um, the Greg yeah. Empire. So here's the, here's the part that I, I want to get to, and, and people swear up and down that Jim Benning had nothing to do with this. Okay. Oh. See, I don't know what Adam's going to bring These up. are NHL GMs I'm excited. that worked together. And this is why I believe, and, and Ryan Lambert's right, literally anyone can be an NHL general manager because when you get one general manager, they've got their assistants and stuff, but mistakes are going to happen, right? Things are not sure. going to pan out. And, and maybe at the time it was a great trade, but that trade didn't work out great. Or it was a great signing at the time and that signing didn't work out great because of injuries or whatever it is. Whatever the, it is. The Leafs okay. tried to trade jo- Jonas Hoagland one time and the trade fell through because uh, I think the fax machine broke. Right. <laughs> Get the facts. Get the facts. <laughs> NHL. Know, know your Jonas Hoagland facts. <laughs> the Jonas Hoagland era, era was over. And then they're like, the fax machine's broken. And they're like, it's back on. <laughs> Those are the facts. I'm sorry. So here's my question. How do you get a bunch of general managers together? Even though you, we, we've acknowledged that they can make mistakes, you get a bunch of general managers together in a room to form a hockey team of which there is no salary cap, of which there is no restriction other than country of origin, and still leave Phil Kessel off of Team USA. Are you crazy? Well, Adam, no. Team USA, the, the United States of America are a very deep hockey nation. Okay. They're, no, they are. They're a deep hockey nation. And you know what? Phil Kessel's a great player. I don't think anyone's... Uh, taking that away from him. No, no one's taking that away from him. No, but, no. but But you got to make room for Justin Abdelkader. Well, and I you want... Really, you got to make room for I him. wanted to run through this, okay? Mm-hmm. I really wanted... I feel like nobody's watched Justin Abdelkader since Mike Babcock left Detroit. <laughs> and that's okay. not a strike against... Fair enough. Abdulkader, Detroit, or anybody. But Mike Babcock makes guys like Abdulkader, I think, better players. And I, he's I think, a feisty, he's unpleasant. What did we see from Leo Komarov this year? Did uh, we not see the best from Leo, Leo Komarov this year? I would say so. I would say and what so. changed? The coach. And we knew Leo was good, but we didn't know it was that good. And I think that's, I think that's what it is. An Abdulkader over years has developed a great reputation, which I believe is earned. But I also yeah. think it's the system he was playing in. Now, here is... Team USA Hockey's forwards, okay? Here's their forwards. We got Abdul Kader, we've got David Backus of St. Louis, Ryan Callahan from Tampa Bay, uh, Brandon Dubinsky from the Columbus Blue Jackets, Patrick Kane, obviously, Ryan Kessler, obviously, TJ Oshie, Max Pacioretty, you would, you have to yeah, think, yeah. Zach Parise, or if you ask NHL 2011, Zach Parsh, because... Is that what they really Parsh? Yeah, to stay in. Yeah, remember that one yeah. from that stadium? Yeah, yeah. To stay, stay in. Stay in. Um, <laughs> oh, and Ryan Whitney was to Whitaker. Really? Yeah, one? yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. It's true. Every now and then. Uh, Joe Pavelski. I've never heard of him. Well, he's not a marketable star. Oh, people are so mad at us for that. By the way, every almost every Sharks jersey I saw, Joe Pavelski. Pavelski. Okay, yeah. fine. Uh, Derek Stepan, uh, James Van Riemsdyk, and Blake Wheeler. Now you're telling me. Then each and every one of those players, James Van Riemsdyk included, mm-hmm. is better than Phil Kessel, is better on this team than Phil Kessel? Get out of here. There's I'm not probably, even going to let you answer that question with a, with a snide guy. remark. There's one guy, Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane. And then Phil Kessel, probably second. Pat, <laughs> Phil no. Kessel has led the NHL, all N- American NHL players, since tw- 2008, 2009 in scoring. He's been scoring prolifically for that long. Listen... Just because he had a strong end of the season on and a, a really great good playoff, team, and just because he's having a potentially Conn Smythe worthy playoffs, and just because he led the U.S. in scoring in Sochi, doesn't mean Phil Kessel deserves to be on Team USA. Okay? Oh. Hmm. Now, in Team USA's defense, leaving Kessel off the team might not have been their only stupid decision. <laughs> uh, Mike Camito. <laughs> Uh, sent to, uh, he tweeted out the uh, on USA roster mm-hmm. beside the not on USA roster. <laughs> hmm. Oh, and he made a team of not USA. The goalies: Ryan Miller, uh, Anderson. Oh shoot, what's Ottawa's Anderson again? Craig. Craig Anderson. I just I had a brain fart. That's okay. And Jimmy Howard. So that is. 
clearly weaker than Ben Bishop, Jonathan Quick, and Corey Schneider. Yes. That's clearly weaker. Their defense, Kevin Shattenkirk, Paul Martin, whoa, Matt Carl. But Paul Martin's terrible. Paul Martin, Martin is terrible. terrible. <laughs> uh, Alex Goligoski, Keith Yandel, Nick Letty, and Zach Bogosian. At forward, and this is where it gets fun, Phil Kessel, Bobby Ryan, Paul Stastny, Jason Pominville, Dustin Brown, Lee Stepniak, Nick Felino, Wilson. I'm not sure which Wilson. Tom? 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 Yeah, it would be Tom. Uh, Tom Wilson. He's American? I don't think he's American. I forgot Stastny was American, but it makes sense. Anyway, he's on that. Uh, Johnson. Not sure which Johnson he means. Anyway, uh, Atkinson, Bonino, 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 Kyle Palmieri, and Brian Boyle. Tom Wilson is Canadian. Hmm. Oh, wait, maybe I'm looking at the wrong. Would you guys Wilson. like to hear another fun fact? I'm not Canadian. sure what he means. So that, that Team USA <laughs> secondary team is pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. It would definitely lose to the first team. Of course, but some of the names. I'm surprised. Shattenkirk fucking. and Kessel really stood out to me. Shattenkirk. Well, and a lot of people pointed out on Twitter, he didn't even have Justin Falk. Whoa! Who is, uh, I think, one of the highest scoring defensemen this past yeah. season, or he had a p- pistol hot start. So here's Team USA's management structure. Okay. Okay. Here's who made the choices. We've got Dean Lombardi, the general manager. We've got Paul Holmgren, the assistant general manager. Uh, and Paul is from uh, Philly, right? Was, was Philly? Yes. Yeah. yeah Philly. Yeah. Philly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Burke. Mm-hmm. Jim Johansson, who I do not know. He's the head of hockey ops. And Brian Burke, by the way, is a senior advisor. Then I'm going to give you the, the assistant coaches, okay? Mm. So we got Mike Sullivan, Pittsburgh Penguins. Yep. Uh, John Hines, Phil Housley, Jack Capuano, and Scott Gordon. Mm. So all those people, but remember the first four that I mentioned. Former Leafs assistant, Scott Gordon. Remember that Dean Lombardi, Paul Holmgren, Brian Burke, and Jim Johansson are the ones that are heading up Team USA's management. Who do you think they chose as a head coach? Oh. <laughs> Say it. John Tortorella. <laughs> now, they made this decision, someone told me, and I didn't bother to check it, before he was hired by the Blue Jackets. Hmm. So the decision made sense in that he would have time to dedicate to the World Cup of Hockey. Mm-hmm. Now he's the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and he's still John Tortorella. You know what I mean? And by that, yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah, calling him... Yeah, it's John Tortorella, but at least he can focus on Full this. time, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not calling him a bad coach, I don't know if he's the best coach available. Like, it, what's Peter Laviolette doing? Isn't he American? Mm-hmm. You know I mean, what? maybe he's earned it down, but I doubt it. Maybe, doubt and that's it. what people are saying about snubs on other teams. Um, I mean, holy smokes, P.K. Subban not making Team Canada. Oh. Chris Letang not making Team Canada. Uh, Martin Marinson not making Team World over Lucas Spiza. Um, John Klingberg didn't make, um, didn't make uh, Team Sweden. Neil Yakupov didn't make Team Russia. That one wasn't quite as controversial. Or wait, did he make Team Russia? I don't think he did. Because I'm just thinking about the World Championship roster. Anyway, the USA wasn't the only team to have uh, eyebrow-raising snubs, but they had the most. They had the most by far. Now, I'm looking at this this list, and it isn't bad. But I do wonder... It's still going, a good team. Going yeah. up against... Absolutely, it's a good team. I mean, it should be. It's the World Cup of Hockey. And I, I could be wrong about this when the time actually comes, but who's going to really, besides Patrick Kane, really score for this team? And it's on a... Is it, is it on, it's on an NHL ice surface, right? Yeah, they're playing the ACC. So, it depends Blake on Wheeler. health. We'll, we'll drop some goals in there. Bra- Blake Wheeler can. Mm-hmm. James Van Riemsdyk can. Can. Uh, Derek Stepan can. Oh, Joe Pavelski definitely can. But like, if if you're Joe Pavelski, are you looking forward to the World Cup of Hockey? Well, uh, you're about to go through the Stanley Cup final again, win or lose. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you're going to go through an extra tournament, and then you got to play another NHL season. You're gonna, July, August, get ready to play in our Mickey Mouse tournament. Yep, <laughs> and- get ready to play six countries and two. Yahtzee teams. <laughs> we literally took a bunch of names and went, Yahtzee! Yeah. <laughs> Slovenia! <laughs> Austria! Um, Switzerland! How Switzerland. about the decision to put Austin Matthews in there if their whole thing was to showcase NHL stars? And he's oh, that one might be 
the second there are some that's egregious the under 23, 23 right? yeah there are some egregious snubs um kessel being one of the most suban i think being one of the most Austin Matthews made Team North America, mm-hmm. and it's nothing against Austin Matthews, certainly. But why, some, why do you hate Austin Matthews? I don't, and, and it's <laughs> not Austin. I'm not bringing up Austin Matthews, but Steve Jesse just, just reminded serious me about this. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, okay. No, Jesse just reminded me. You know who didn't make Team North America, which is like I'm under 23. It it's a bunch of kids, mm-hmm. a bunch of kids, a lot of them with very little NHL experience. Alex Galchenyuk. I don't know what he didn't make Team North America. <laughs> Was he? Didn't he have thirty goals? Was he eligible? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hold on. A Hold second. on. Exactly. Exactly. That one. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Damn, I'm looking at this team. How though. was the season, dude? I, dude. I mean, it's a stack team. Here, go. Th- go Hold. Th- no, no, no. Not. It's not just a stack team. This team is going to dominate. I think. Who are the goalies? The North America? Team North America? That's the only weakness. And, John Gibson and Matt Murray, though, are not weaknesses. You It'll know what, Matt Murray? will be fun to try and play defense. Connor Hellebuck. That. No. That's the guy. He's the third goalie. You're right. But holy smokes. And it, like on defense, you got uh, Ekblad. You got Gostas B here. Gostas B. None of them can play D, though. Seth, Seth Jones, Ryan Murray, <laughs> Colton Pareko, uh, Morgan Riley, and Jacob Truba. That's not bad. It's a Truba story. Oh Adam. <laughs> oh, Adam! This is a great team. Who are the Who are the, the forwards though? Because Gallagher is a forward. Drew Ann, Jack Eichel, Johnny Goudreau, uh, Goudreau, excuse me, Dylan Larkin, Austin Matthews, Nate McKinnon, uh, Connor McDavid, J T. Miller, which is interesting, uh, Sean Monahan, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Brandon Saad, Mike she- she- sorry, Mark Shifley, and I would have taken. No offense to Rangers fans. Every, who now all of a sudden think I have the hate on for them? I would have taken Galch over JT Miller. But I mean, Rangers fans, you can do a trade with Montreal right now. You do Galch it. for JT Miller. You do. It. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, you do it. You do it. <laughs> you do it. You do it. So twice. Galch isn't isn't eligible for Team Russia, and North America doesn't pick him. That's no. His his international team is actually USA. It is? He uh, played for yeah. USA at the World Juniors. He, really? His dad, uh, his family moved around a lot when oh, he I was a kid. I didn't know that. Kid. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I think his nationality is Belarusian. He speaks Russian, even has a bit of an accent, but he plays for Team, Team USA. USA. Yeah. It's and a the, North America snub. Yes. So, uh, like, once the Olympics come around, for example, he can't play for Russia or Belarus because... He's already played for Team USA. He's an American national. He was born in Wisconsin, actually. Ah, there you wow. go. Wow. Mm-hmm. Home of Phil Kessel. Would not have thought that Galch would be from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Learn something new every day. You wouldn't think William Nylander's from Calgary, would you? No, but he is. He is certainly from Calgary. And it's funny, because he's Swedish, mm-hmm. but he's actually Canadian. Yeah. When, whenever they announce it uh, at the ACC, you know, from Calgary, Alberta, William Nylander. I'm like, really? Is <laughs> yeah. he? Yeah. Is on, he? Guys. From... Cal Sweden, sweet, sweet Cal. From Calgary, mostly. Like, I mean, if we're going to split hairs. (laughs) Adam, my only problem with that Team North America is name one player who's going to stay in their own end. You're right. (laughs) I mean, So I think what Jesse's saying is they're going to dominate offensively so much that they won't have to play defense. Right. There we go. They'll be the, but in a tournament like that, you can get away with that. You can get away with that. We'll see. When they come against Canada, we'll see. Okay. Do we (laughs) really think the World Cup of Hockey is going to be an excellent display of the best hockey possible? (laughs) No. (laughs) It's going to be. Do we think these guys are going to be? Do we think these guys are going to compete the way they compete in the Olympics or the Stanley Cup playoffs? No, because it doesn't matter. (laughs) Absolutely not. It it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. It'll be shinny, which Team North America, I think, would excel at tremendously. Yes. I, whoever's running North America, I'm, I'm going to try to find out here. I think Peter Shirelli. They did yes. a great job. Yeah, Peter Shirelli, uh, Stan Bowman. Oh, Peter Shirelli and Stan Bowman. There That's you okay. go. Um, and the head coach is Todd McClellan. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Assisted by, get this, this is crazy, John Cooper, Peter DeBoer, Dave Tippett. Oh, wow. How do they decide who goes to Canada and who goes to well, North America? I guess Canada's got uh, like Babby D- Cochran. Yancey. Did they do a draft? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mike Babcock. John Cooper, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Mike Babcock, Claude Julian, uh, Bill Peters, Joe Quinville, Barry Trotz. 
They Barry Trotz Babcock and Babcock and Quenville. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, tournament. sorry, Dave Tippett. <laughs> uh, although he's American, isn't he? Asian? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. This anyway. tournament is just so ridiculous. It's it's, it's going to be fun. Oh, my it's God. It's going to be fun. It will not be the best hockey. No. no. And that's what matters. Hey, Sportsnet 590 The Fan, we have got to go. When we come back, though, on the download portion of this show, we're going to talk about uh, Marley's Lessons Learned. Mm. Uh, they lost to the Hershey Bears. They were the most dominant team in the AHL this year and could not make it happen in the conference finals. We're going to happen. We'll talk about well, what went wrong there. And somebody who's getting almost zero fanfare in Toronto because of some guy named Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner. Oh, yeah. Who did a whole bunch of great things, mm-hmm. and nobody's talking about it. So we will. Mm. Next. And more on uh, the Pittsburgh stuff, too. We're on the online portion? Yes. The name of the boat was Balls Deep. There you go. I feel like your friend should step in and stop you from being a douchebag, right? Me? No, not you. Boat oh. namer. Like, yeah. What are you doing? The French? Balls Deep. He said huh? your friends should your step friends. in. Your friends. Oh, Did I say French? I, I thought you... S- okay. No, you probably said friends. I've d- I'm just very tired. That's okay. And that sentence was very confusing. The French should step in and make sure you're not such a douchebag. Yeah, back. the French need to step in. Like, what? <laughs> Damn, the French. What? No, your friends need to stop you from naming your boat that. Don't you think? It's just it's like, just a big old boat. If you can afford a boat, you're probably deep. at least in your mid-40s. Unless you're like some teenage millionaire, which good for you. And, and you can have a boat named Balls Well, then Deep? that's okay <laughs> yeah. if you're 16. But if you're 45 and you got a boat named Balls Deep, you got to be. You've been married for 20 years. Like a, like a 50 year old successful business mogul or have like a really rad Instagram account. Yeah, yeah. If you're Dan Blazarian, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, you saw it? Okay. Yeah. You All right. see, it's a boat that says Balls Deep. That's so here's, here's what I want to do, guys Balls. I want to, uh, I want to read something because there's a, an article up at sportsnet.ca. It's called Marley's Lessons Learned. That's from, uh, shoot, what's the name of the writer again? Uh, Patrick? Uh, I suck. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll buddy. I'll find out for you. Sorry, buddy. Patrick Williams, I think? Cool. He's a very good AHL writer. Sportsnet uh, luckily brought him on board recently. Mackenzie Liddell. Mackenzie Liddell, another AHL writer <laughs> for Sportsnet. That's you. But, but here's, here's what kills me, all right? is the First off, it's the Facebook comments, which I'm going to read to you. The Sportsnet ones? Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to read these to you to rot your brain. And also... Wait, sh- wait, do these ones talk about decapitating me as well? <laughs> no, no. It has nothing to do with you. Holy shit. Um, they are not here to, to comment on you. Oh, good. Which is great. Good. However, surprised. However, it, it will prove to you what not to be on the internet. And mm. I implore you, Steve Dangle podcast listener, mm. I implore you to not be this person. I don't think you are. Most, our, our listeners do not. They're intelligent people. I pride ourselves. I, I pride our show on having smart listeners. I think yes, yeah. it's it's weird as someone in the media. You're supposed to to be the person who is the smart one. Mm-hmm. On this show, we're we're not. We're actually we get corrected all the time, and that's okay. Like there's nothing wrong with that. I'm okay with not being the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. Although for such a passionate, uh, you know. Uh, listenership we have none of them tweeted uh, that article at us that Merriam Webster says that a hot dog is a sandwich oh my god not one uh, literally uh, never got that tweet none. millions Sorry. of people tweeted that no. to us no, <laughs> no. 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 alright so here's what here's what people are saying about the Toronto Marlies oh my god shut up about them maybe cover the team still in it oh I forgot they're not Toronto teams forget this Leafs net go ahead and <laughs> Leafs net. Okay, so that idiot is on Facebook. Oh, God. That yeah. person left a comment on their actual Facebook. It's an anti Toronto comment. Adam, go ahead, click their profile. What part of Alberta are they from? Crescent Heights Senior High. I'm going to open this up. Give me a sec. Guaranteed. Western, Alberta? Western Canada, I'll bet the farm. Really? Always. Dude, all the hate I get nowadays is from Western Canada. And I promise I'm not trying to. Where? Where? Calgary, Alberta. Guess wow. fucking what? Wow. <laughs> I should have known Please. that. I know wow. this school. Nice. I know exactly where the school is. <laughs> I should have known Nailed that. It. You know, wow. we're, we're always going to be the center of the universe as long as you keep orbiting around. Yep. As long as you keep orbiting around, talking about us. Go, talk your shit, Calgary. Here, here's talk some your other, shit. Here's some other lessons learned, according to Facebook, for the Toronto Marlies. The Toronto teams can't win championships anymore. Huh? That's... What, what do you mean Marley? anymore? <laughs> what decade is that comment from? <laughs> Rob, is this from 1994? A guy named Rob says, the Marlies learned that they didn't quote-unquote have it. That is in keeping with Leaf tradition. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, tame, tame. Good effort, guys. And for some, welcome to the NHL. Wow. Mike, uh, Mike Coates. Good to Are you good sure that was on Facebook? That was on Facebook. Yeah. Some guy named Dorian. Twit tags his friend Brett and goes, what happened to all your future stars? Got beat by the Caps farm team, bud. In the conference final. Mr. Scientist. Mr. Scientist. <laughs> Aaron says, maybe what they learned is don't fall behind 3 nothing in a playoff series. That, that's a good lesson. Pretty solid he's, lesson. He's I agree probably with right. You, he's probably right. Um, Frank. Frank tweets that they learned that they ha- that they're losers in that uniform. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Frank. Lesson number one: Toronto teams always choke. Okay. The Maple Lopes. Bye bye. What part of Alberta? <laughs> Check. What part of Alberta? Hang on. Let me find out. Thornhill, Toronto. Actually. Get the fuck well, out. Thornhill, 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 Ontario. Um, wow, that's shocking. And that's Gabe, shocking. Gabe Bedard. That's because they're the laughs out loud. What part of Alberta? Get it? The laughs out loud. What, I love this game. What the the new game? What part of Alberta? <laughs> I just I had to run through the comments on that because it's like here's a great group of young kids who got beat in the playoffs but had a great year otherwise, and people are just ripping them. Gabe. Finish final four. Isn't it great that we you can just look this shit up? I actually, I can't see it. Uh, it doesn't say... Go ahead and look through all their photos. I'm They're looking. right there. I'm creeping this poor man's <laughs> profile. Are there mountains? Oh, he's like a kid. <laughs> and he's got a dog just like Iggy. Uh, he oh, likes Xbox cute. 360. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just but he's, everything about him. He's got, oh, a he's got one of, one of those, a mountain and trees. So. His, his profile picture is still one of those uh, France filters. Yeah. Way to go, bud. <laughs> Way to go. And it's by a hot tub, so... Yeah, there's a pickup truck, and yeah, he's, he lives in the mountains for sure. All right. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Anyway, I just wanted... What are the actual lessons learned for the Marlies, though? Because I... And I said... We talked about it last last episode. I don't think it's the worst thing that they lost. No. And let me... Okay. I'm not making excuses for the team, okay? I'm going to hammer them. going to hammer them a bit, but let's start with the good stuff. The Marlies were a juggernaut of a team, 114 points in the regular season, one of the best AHL teams of all time. However, part of the reason why there was so much optimism with this team, they weren't supposed to be this good. Um, It's a rebuild, and generally speaking, when the NHL team isn't very good, the farm team is better. Not always the case. Um, The Marlies were a very young team. Most of them were 24 or younger, especially the bigger parts. Zach Hyman was like middle of the pack, and I think he's 23. Kasperi Kapanen is 19. Uh, Soshnikov is 20 or 21. Nylander is 19. Garrett Sparks was 22 most of the season. Antoine Bibo was 21 most of the season. He just turned 22. Uh, Stuart Percy is like 22. Uh, you know, there were a few veterans there. Ben Smith didn't join until very late in the season. Rich Kloon was mostly a depth role. Um, so you really got TJ Brennan and Mark Arcabello. Okay, that's what you had. And Brendan Leipzig's another young guy. Like, a very, very young team. Teams that young are not supposed to do well. Um, and they killed it. They absolutely killed it. So, And had significant personnel changes throughout the season. Significant personnel. I mean, every AHL team has that. But, I mean, the Marlies were really sapped. Like, completely sapped uh, at the end of the season. Um and even the uh, some of the additions they made were young guys. Um, Connor Carrick, there's a relatively Tobias young Lindbergh. guy. Tobias Lindbergh is 20 years old. Uh, Colin Smith is 21 or 22. So it's disappointing that they finished first and didn't win the championship. But they got all the way to the Final Four, and the reason it's disappointing is because they overachieved in the first place. They did. Are there glaring holes in the organization? Sure. Sure. Um, is Antoine Bebo or Garrett Sparks going to be the Marley starter next year? Dude, I have no idea. I, you know, I think I have a decent read on different little moves and tinkerings the team is going to have next year. Goaltending? I have no idea. Is Bernie going to be their starter for one more season? I don't know. Is Garrett Sparks going to be the Mar- the Leafs backup? I don't know. Is he going to be the Marley starter? I don't know. Are they even going to re-sign him? I don't know. Bebo? I don't know. Kasky Swo, everyone forgot about him. They signed him, so you would assume he'll be there. 
Are they going to send one of Sparks or Bebo to the ECHL, get a bunch of starts, and Kasky Squo is either the starter or the backup? Do they send Kasky Squo to the ECHL and he gets a bunch of starts there? I have no read, no read on what the Marlies are going to do in that. Um, I think the playoffs help them feel human, and I know Sheldon Keefe didn't like it. You know, when that was brought up. But he did also throughout the season talk about manufacturing adversity, which the Marlies kind of had to do. Uh, that's what you have to do when you're too good. <laughs> what a great problem to have. The Marlies were too good. So, how do you manufacture adversity? You find ways to not necessarily make things difficult for yourself, but it's almost like you set up like missions to achieve. Like a great, a great thing, a great thing the Flames did. In 2004 for that uh, cup run they had against Tampa. So for the back half of the season, because I I don't think they were in the playoffs, so they were like just skirting on a playoff spot. Daryl Sutter, who was the coach of the Flames at the time, said, all right, you have to win four of the next seven games for the rest of the season. And that prepared them for the playoffs, right? So that that sort of Mm. thing is manufacturing adversity. I mean, you should try to win at least four of every seven games anyway. Right, but that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. Um, one thing I noticed with them is uh, they let games get away from them quickly. Um, they get flustered. Uh, they grip the sticks really tight. They start taking stupid penalties, and uh, before you know it, you're in an elimination game on home ice, and you're down three nothing. Not in the series. Well, they were down three nothing in the series. Come back, have an amazing game four. Have an amazing game four. They win it five nothing. It looks like not only are they still in the series, but they could even storm back and win the whole thing. They start game five down three nothing. But their strength in offense made me feel like they could actually come back. And they almost did. They almost mm-hmm. did. They lost three two. But Sasha um, Nylander scored. So yeah, it's. I don't think their poor defense uh, was necessarily a lack of ability. It was between the ears. It was between the ears. Um, and by the way, that's what I mean when I say, and I hate to sound like a Toronto apologist, which I probably do, but that's what, when you get smacked in the face sometimes, Mm -hmm. when you lose something that you shouldn't have lost or that you believe that you should have won, sometimes it's a wake up call. Like, well, I guess it's going to take a little bit more focus than that. And if it it had it been just handed to them, would they have really appreciated it? And the Marley's defense is a really good example of what I was just talking about with that whole age thing. You got TJ Brennan, okay? So he's your he's your older guy there, your leader. Um, he's known for all offense, crazy offense, but really not the defense at all. If he was any, if he was good at defense, he'd be in the NHL, no problem. Uh, you got Andrew Campbell, who's your captain. He was steady both ways. He was good, and he was a little older. But then again, you got Percy, who's like twenty two. There's a younger guy. You got Justin Hall, who made the team out of camp. Signed on an AHL deal. I think he was one of the only ones on the team that played regularly. You got Renat Valiev, who I think is 21. Who else am I? Uh, you had uh, Scott Harrington, who played a few games. I think he's 22. You got Frank Carrado, who only played like seven games. He doesn't even really count. Connor Carrick joined the team at the end of the year, early 20s. Like, all early 20s. All early 20s. And I don't think it's that they were bad. I think it's that they were what they were. You know what I mean? They were a young defense that got taken advantage of on some nights. They are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. And the goalies. I mean, they are what they are. They're a young tandem. Mm -hmm. Right. Taxed with uh, playing behind uh, the best team in the league, which sounds like a great problem to have, but people make you live up to a standard, right? I would ask you what's in store, but I think it's kind of an unfair question. Because I think a, a fairer time to ask that question is after free agency starts. Yeah, once the draft is done, once free agency is done. Well, changes have already started. Uh, Mark Arcabello just today, right before we started the show, signed a two-year contract with the Swiss team. I forget which one. So he's going to Switzerland. So He'll he, probably lead the league in scoring there. Probably. I mean, he he's designed for European hockey, I think. Mark SC Arcabello's, Burn. SC Burn. Fire, Fire Burn? Oh, the rival of Fire Burn. Oh, okay. Fire, Fire Burn. How dare you, Steve? Fire burn. Fire fire burn is what my dad calls them. My dad doesn't wear glasses. Anyway, uh, so he's designed for that. Um, Colin Smith is a name you should start listening to because the Leafs got him in the Sean Mathias trade. He was an amazing point-per-game player down the stretch for the regular season. 
had trouble getting in the lineup in the playoffs, but once he was in it, he actually performed okay. But uh, there was a trade in the KHL where because he was drafted in the KHL, but that happens all the time, and it usually doesn't they have matter. your rights. Yeah, it doesn't matter usually. But uh, I forget which team it was. They acquired his rights, and it actually cost them quite a bit of money to do so. And Jesse, do you have his contract up, or do you have his general fan drip? I can pull it up. If he needs to be re-signed, it means more. But uh, there's clearly interest for him in the KHL. I think he would be enormously successful in the KHL or somewhere in Europe because he's small and speedy and he's he's got that offense. I don't know if he'll be back with the Leafs organization. It might just be a rumor. I don't know. Uh, sorry, I'm looking it up right here. Where are you, homie? Where are you, big? Oh, uh, uh. he's an RFA. He's an RFA. So you got, I mean, yeah, what am I going to do? Go through the whole team? There are a lot of big decisions to make. Scott Harrington barely even played last year. What are you going to do with him? He was part of the Phil Kessel deal. Rich Clune, UFA, what are you going to do with him? Connor Carrick, RFA, they're going to re-sign him for how much, and he's probably going to be back with the Leafs. Ben Smith, UFA. Alex Stalock, UFA, he's definitely gone. Rafi Torres, hello well. Um, there's a lot. There is a lot going on with this team. So it's impossible to know what next year's Marley's team looks like. What we do know is that there are actually limited spots on the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's a lot of guys Mm -hmm. upstairs still with NHL contracts. Colin Greening, Milan Mahalik, and uh, who's the third guy in the Ottawa trade? Uh, Jared Cowan. (laughs) You know, Jared Cowan's gone. There was Huh? Brooks Like? Brooks Like. Sorry, that's the Washington trade. But yes, yes, we got Brooks Like, and then you've got Van Riemsdyk, Kessel, Kadri, uh, Komarov. So that's... Ten players right there, and then the guys coming Seven in players who right deserve there. a spot like Marner and Matthews. Marner's yeah, Marner, Matthews, Nylander, Connor Brown, Soshnikov. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. like Nylander, Hyman. Yep, I think you already said those two. Sorry, no, I didn't say Hyman. Uh, Andreas Johnson, I think, is going to start the year in the AHL. I th- he's too. He looked very good. He only played a couple games, but he looked above the AHL. He he's going to be a very good player, but he got rocked so hard. Um, knocked out cold. I don't know if he would have returned for uh, for the Marlies in the final. They already ruled him out of the conference final if that had gone to seven. Uh, so I would expect him to start there. Travis Dermott, I think, might start there. I don't remember if he's uh, slide eligible. Andrew Nielsen can play in the AHL or go back to junior. So he's interesting. There's a lot. There's a ton. You can do that? Sometimes. It, mm-hmm. I think it depends on the birthday. He's got a late birthday. So okay. there's some weird thing where he can either play in the AHL or go back to junior. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Well, it shall be interesting. Indeed. Very excited about this. And uh, and with Mitch Marner's accomplishments, so let's just quickly run over that. He won the MVP of everything. Regular he season, really did. Regular season playoffs, Memorial Cup. Um, and Memorial Cup final MVP, I believe, as well. TheLeafStation.com had a great post where they're like, I don't know what the concern is about him bulking up. He's been lifting weights for weeks. And it's just <laughs> him lifting like six or seven different trophies. Memorial Cobb, J. Ross Robertson, the Gretzky Trophy, the holy smokes! What does this actually mean, though? Yeah, Because there's oh, apparently there's only one player that's ever done this before. I don't know who that player is. Who's won them all like that? Probably Taylor Hall. Okay. Probably Taylor Hall because, yeah, they won... OHL, Memorial Cup, he got the Gretzky Award. I don't remember if he got most outstanding player like Marner did. He probably did because he's Taylor Hall. Jeez. He's... This kid's got to make the NHL, man. Now, he's gotta. He, he does have to make the NHL, although if you listen to the Leafs, no, he doesn't. He's got to earn the NHL. I know, but, uh, you know, people keep... I saw people say, name one example of a player going back to junior and it hurt his development. What's Mitch Marner going to learn? What's he going to learn? I'd go back deflated if I were him. Of course you would. Because he's done it. He's earned it all. There's nothing left to do. What are you going to do? Work on your defense? You don't have to. Mm-hmm. You're too, like, are you going to play conservatively to make the game harder on purpose? Mm-hmm. You're Mitch Marner. You don't have to. You can just school everybody. Dance the jock off people. Like, and And you're... You know what if you know some guy in junior just completely trucks him and now he's now he's got a concussion. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing with Mitch Marner: you can take him. You've got a deep enough team, deep enough team, that you can shield him, minutes wise. You can and send him to the World Juniors if you like. You can yeah. send him to the World Juniors. You can put him on the. You can put him on the third line. 
playing a, a wing role, put him in a non pressure role. Because the thing about it is that even with guys like Matthews and Nylander coming in, the pressure is still squarely on the Van Reebsdykes and Cadres of the world to mm-hmm. get it done. And and I know that there will be pressure on Nylander and Matthews, but I don't think that anybody in their right mind is expecting either of those people to lead the team in the way. Like, think of the pressure on Connor McDavid. When he went to Edmonton, despite the fact that Taylor Hall and Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Jordan Everly and all those guys are there, it's still Connor McDavid's team. I kind of felt bad for those other guys in the Oilers because everyone was like, yay, yeah, 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 but Connor McDavid. But Connor McDavid. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but here, it's... It's not going to just be Austin Matthews' team when he comes in, right? There are other players that have played a while that are still quite young, Morgan Riley and Nazem Kadri and James Van Riebsdyk, just to name a few, Mm -hmm. Jake Gardner as well, that are great young players that are going to be able to carry the load, that are at that age where they can, and these guys are going to be able to kind of come up and not be responsibility free, but they're not going to be expected to lead the charge right away. And I think that's important. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. You need a couple years to learn that sort of thing. And you can make them a healthy scratch. On occasion, sure. I don't think they will. I don't uh, think there's a chance in hell unless he's dogging it out there. Yeah. And not a way. I'd see it. Give him a night off every now and again. Yeah, I mean he's, he's used 19. to playing. You know, uh, uh, not fewer games because he obviously had a very deep playoff run, but uh, games not quite as close together. NHL, you're playing every, you know, second day, third day, something like that. OHL, you might play three games a week. You might. Sometimes it's two. Right. You know what and what about Switzerland, where he was playing? Oh, Austin Matthews. Martin? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that could be different, too. A lot of a lot of players come over, and, and they kind of tail off a bit. Okay. So maybe so maybe they have that discussion, too, and they just say, listen, this is the way it's going to be, fellas, all of you. Mm. You're going to have to sit some nights. And he's going to have the World Cup and then exhibition games. Oh, they should just cancel exhibition this year for those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to get a feel of where they are in your lineup. Mm-hmm. Damn good thing he's nineteen and he's got all the or eighteen. He's got all the energy in the world. I think the World Cup is going to happen and players are going to absolutely hate it. They're going to come back and so who's let's play a game called Who's going to miss the first month of the season? <laughs> oh, <laughs> someone's. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Who's it going to happen to? Anyone? I don't feel like the NHL's really set themselves up for success here. No. You think? I think. Good thing they'll have the Olympics to play in. Uh, well, Jesse sent an article, and what, what were Gary Bettman's comments? It was basically the... the he we said, don't want to pay to send our players there. You know what this tournament is? So they want, they want the Olympic Committee. The IOC. To, the IOC to pay for NHL players. Mm-hmm. Are they crazy? Can, can I... Yes. Yes, they are. <clears throat> just thought it. Just thought it. Throw that out there. Um, I can't even find it. In you know my why? Phone you know why they won't? You it. know why they won't back out on this on this deal? Why? Why? Because the ratings are too damn good. You know what this tournament is? I guarantee you, they will not. They will not back out on this. But because Adam, the time difference doesn't make sense for the NHL oh, to go there. Oh no, that's so not true. They're, they're just too. The, the broadcasters would NBC would have it in the states because they have all the Olympics. And then you've probably got a CBC Sportsnet par- partnership up here because the CBC does get the Olympics here. Mm-hmm. But CBC and Sportsnet have a very close partnership. And technically, Rogers owns all the NHL stuff. So you would assume with the NHL players in it, Rogers going to have some sort of thing. I don't think if you're canceling outdoor watching parties that are nefarious at best, have no effect on the ratings at all. And if they did have an effect on the ratings, that means the rating systems are broken. Well, hold yeah. on. Yeah, 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 if, yeah. if that is the case... Not sending NHL players to the one place where you're guaranteed to get great ratings and it's once every four years and everybody cares about it and everybody watches it and it is the most watched sporting event in the world. Not sending NHL players to that is absolute pure folly. I you, are, you are a clown if you do that. But I don't think it matters if the billion plus people who will be watching in primetime in Asia are watching if North America isn't seeing it in primetime. Like, who cares? <laughs> You're right. Like, yeah, cares? lest we go the, grow the game. But we, we don't need that. Yeah, we'd really just be doing the KHL a favor, it's right? It's not going to be on that. Because <laughs> they're the ones with the Chinese teams coming in. I, I didn't see it, but uh, supposedly uh, one of the first people, if not the first person that Sidney Crosby spoke to after the game was a reporter from uh, Asia. Well, 
Wow. Because, because they sent someone to cover the Stanley Cup final. I didn't see it for myself. That's mm-hmm. just what someone told me. I actually the heard the entire that... continent sent one guy. The entire... <laughs> the president of Asia said, <laughs> <laughs> because I did good in geography. Uh, Ivis Kalnish uh, was, was watching it... F- 3 or 4 a.m. in Latvia last night. He nice. said, like, literally, you're... So hardcore. Yeah. So hardcore. I, and, and it was funny, because he was messaging me. He's like, hey, man, like, just hanging out by myself. What are you doing? Because <laughs> no one else is up. He's like, but it's the first time it's it's being broadcast in Latvia. So. Oh, cool. Oh. Apparently. Apparently. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Just, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, is this tournament IMAPs? Like, remember when iPhone was like, we're not going to allow anyone to use oh, Google yeah. Maps, which, by the way, is the Olympics... <laughs> And then, nope, see, this one works just as good. And then some lady drives into a lake and dies? (laughs) Yeah. By the way, if there's water ahead of you, that story did not make sense. Okay? That did not make sense. Have you never seen The Office? That happened to Michael Scott. It must have happened to somebody in real life. And and if Michael Scott's your bar... If that's the bar you need to jump over and you still can't hit that, you got troubles. I'm just saying. Anyway, I... Will, okay. What were you going to say? Oh, no, sorry. no, 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 no please, please, please. Oh, no, I was going to move on. Oh, no, no, okay, just oh, one okay, point. Okay. Last question, okay. Canadian, last question. Canadian standoff. Can yeah. Listen, I know that we're going to watch the World Cup. I know that. Totally! We're going to watch the World Cup, but is it not going to be the most hilarious thing we've ever seen? Yeah, when Team North America wins and they play friggin' uh, Panda as as their anthem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I hope that's <laughs> How anthem. sick is that going to be? Oh, my God. <laughs> like a bros in Atlanta. Like, just Morgan <laughs> Riley. Yeah! <laughs> I just think it's going to be it'll be entertaining for not the reasons the NHL's hoping. Mm, never know. Hey, you know what? The quality of hockey might be an issue, but if you give me but an the exciting average fan doesn't care. If you give me an exciting finish, I think yeah. everyone loves overtime. Oh, everyone yeah. loves a and close you know game. If every game's 9-8, the NHL wins because what what's the problem with the NHL game? Can't score. Marley's mm-hmm. most memorable game of the season. They were losing 8-4 after two. They came back and won it 9-8 there you go. in overtime. I mean, yes, it's a lacrosse score, but does anyone care? No. no. Nobody cares. No. Too fun. Okay. Too fun, too furious. Jesse, what, what's up, man? I had two things. One, happy three years. That's is it today? It is today. No, that was yesterday. Yesterday. Oh, my happy goodness. Wow! Happy three Happy years three to years. us. Um, wow! Nothing's changed. Three years. Yeah. <laughs> where did you fly out of today? Pittsburgh. I where, was in Pittsburgh to, this to, morning. To where? Toronto. Toronto. Where? Which airport? Uh, Billy Bishop. Yeah, um, Billy Bishop is awful close to what neighborhood? Liberty Village. Oh! Who, who picked you up this morning? Adam Wilde. Oh. Where, where did we all go, guys? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. We all. We all came to here, right? <laughs> it just seems like if I was friends with two guys, oh, they could have no! just picked me up oh, along the way. Oh, no. <laughs> but over the three years, nothing's oh. changed, and I'm so sorry. You guys sorry. are just still taking rides. Oh my god! Even Jesse. though we're all going to the same place, and I was right there oh, next Jesse. to you guys, I'm and so you could have taken me to work. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but man. I sat on transit. Whatever, I'm Took so sorry. Like I'm so sorry. I didn't even think. I didn't, I didn't text me this morning. Yeah, I'm just going to get Steve. Going to be there at noon. What? You know, to be fair, you could have been like, "Can you pick me up?" Oh no, then I couldn't say this. No. I feel oh, terrible. I'm such no. a Adam. Do you have a back seat it, now? I do have back before seat. Before you didn't have back. I'm you sorry. I thought, oh, I'm, th- I'm sorry. I thought I had a clown car. <laughs> I thought I had a clown car. I mean, he does have a clown car. Yeah, I didn't want to sit in it anyway. So whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because you, you know, might have died. Your head might have come. Yeah. Yeah, 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 might have come yeah. right off, just like, so a, I just like a giraffe say, driving a beetle. It would never have been silly. <laughs> never change. I guys. am so sorry, Jesse. <laughs> I, I'm no. just, There's just a way glad. to celebrate our third anniversary. <laughs> By the way, it was hilarious. Oh, shit. Hilarious last oh, year. Shit. Do you guys remember last year's anniversary sort of episode, the one where we announced, where we just said, like, it's been... Um, no. Because I can remember it vividly. I remember, like, oh, by the way, it's our it's the second year of us doing this. <laughs> and, we're like, and we're like, great, cool, no one cares. Like, <laughs> <laughs> My second wedding anniversary is coming up. Is that how I just... I don't Here know. you go, honey. And it wasn't that it wasn't that like we don't care about the relationship. It's that we it's it's just the second, right? Third, I feel like is a bit of an accomplishment because yeah. third is like that's that's you're doing something. That's, yeah, yeah, you're, you're like, into something. Definitely like a band in the producer, <laughs> like for sure. 
Jeez, we're terrible. I'm so sorry, man. Do you guys uh, want to check in quickly with the neighborhood? I, oh, I do. You and you know what? I do want to let you know that uh, from Shannon. That <laughs> Jesse sat on that for like an hour. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's just a silent assassin. Eh? Oh. Just, so Shannon Shannon messaged me and she said, "I feel like you guys need to know that there is a singles meetup at Metro oh. in Liberty Village on Fridays. So all the single people in Liberty what? Village on Fridays go to the grocery store. You know what? I need to meet the love of my life and a Spanish onion. <laughs> <laughs> easily, easily viable. There. Here we go. Need yeah. some hummus and some booty. Well, I guess you could tell a lot about a person. <laughs> tell a lot about a person by what they eat, right? <laughs> is that is that a staple of a healthy, balanced diet? Yeah, it's Liberty Village hummus and booty. All right, yeah. fair enough. Well, but I mean, like, like look, you look at someone's cart, right? Mm. And you can tell whether or not because if if someone is a super hardcore strict eater, I know that we're probably not going to get along very well. If you can't eat a burger every once in a while, I'm not talking about every day, every once in a while, even if it's just a turkey burger or it's a veggie burger, if well, you don't eat bread, I'm, there's an issue. Your uh, Tinder bio was like uh, hot sauce and sweatpants. Yeah, Mike, right? if, if you can't get down with hot sauce there and sweatpants, go. keep swiping. <laughs> What's the name of the meetup? I don't know. I think Steve has something. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess we're about to name it. I'm just thinking of a popular song in the in particularly the vine universe that involves booty and groceries oh oh God. yeah oh yeah what is it i'm not gonna say it why aren't you gonna say it you gotta say because it because i feel uncomfortable saying eat the booty like groceries <laughs> <laughs> i hope that's what it's called they should be called that eat the booty like groceries i, I, I highly doubt that but you're quoting a song are you sure metro didn't put that up on the bulletin <laughs> 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 and four avocados for five bucks. There you go. Um, Jesse, what do you got? Um, what's going so, on in Lib? So the area that's right next to Billy Bishop today <laughs> is from Chris. <sighs> I thought you guys should know that. Hey, kind of random, but I got to pick up my air conditioner from my old apartment. Could someone with a car possibly give me a lift around five tonight? That's what he asked on the on the Facebook page. <laughs> you have friends, Chris. <laughs> I didn't have a problem phones with it are great. until Steve said that. Now I have a bit of a problem with it. It's, but, your phones are great. Here, it's, you, if you have a passcode, you unlock it. You send a little text. Maybe even you give them a little ring if you want to go old school. Mm-hmm. Do taxis exist? Do ta- well, mm. yeah, you can put a you can put an yeah. air conditioner in a taxi. Yeah, you know, sure you can. Yeah, but you got to pay for a taxi. Mm. Uh, why why pay for a taxi when I can get some sucker on the Facebook when page? When I can get some effing stranger who could make me into a lamp, do it for free. Come on. Uh, how's it hanging? I'm here to pick up your fridge. It's an air conditioner. Doesn't matter. Get in the car. Going back in time. Fighting a walrus. So what? I thought you guys would just know about Chris. And then I wanted to show you a picture of Jill, who just got her balcony cleaned by balconycleaners.com. She lives at no, it's not balcony, so it can't be done well. Is this segment take, sponsored? Take a look at, at this point. Her balcony that has just been cleaned. That right. is the entire balcony. Her balcony is about the size of your shower. <laughs> and really? I, I mean it looks clean, but <laughs> there's what what is on the balcony, Steve? I'm just picturing I'm just picturing like granola bar wrappers and garbage and like old socks and the and the balcony cleaners just pick it up and go and heave it over, it over the balcony throw it over <laughs> Liberty Village is just covered in garbage because balcony cleaners just go chucking things off balconies <laughs> bricks and coins but she literally has two chairs and a table glasses. by the way the chairs if you wanted to take the chair, sometimes when, you, when you're in a chair, you like to rotate to the left or rotate to the right with the chair, and you, st- you, you move the chair. Th- this balcony is so thin that you couldn't actually do that. The chair direction is the chair direction. Like the slant. Yeah. Like they, you couldn't turn it and put your legs there. Like, you can't, if you sit in the chair, you can't look directly out of the balcony because the balcony is so thin that you're, you're, you're literally, you're, your knees wouldn't fit. Whenever you look at a place Jesus. in Toronto, the real estate agent should just go, there you go. There you, you want a balcony? Well, here, here, yeah. there you go. There's your little sliver. That's the Enjoy thing about it. the thing about Toronto is the dream is there, but it's always just out of reach. A uh, guy, a guy I went to school with who ran for municipal office once said, "Toronto, it'll be a great city once it's done." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just it's not done. It's not done. 
Never well, been. even when it is though, like, you know, you, you, it's so funny. You pay all this extra money for these balconies and you can't even, and you got to pay money to clean it or you could just clean it. But what I'm talking about is you can't even rotate a chair in it. Like you could easily you, you're just, telling me you couldn't get a variance for one more foot, one more foot of space. I tell you what, you could just as easily give me that money and clean it yourself. How about that? True. How True. about you take the money you would spend on a balcony cleaner and you invest it in a home in Oshawa, Ontario. How about that? Oh, great. So then we can walk in and, and rant like you did at the end of last episode, or the beginning of last episode. I thought I was Somebody tweeted me, cool-headed. like, oh, I thought I was going to tune into the Steve Dangle podcast for an escape. But no, as I sit in traffic, I'm listening to you guys talking about sitting in traffic. You know what? That's one response. And then there was another guy who I, I guess did not get his escape at all. He's like, and another thing about the fucking Oshawa Go train. <laughs> Those idiots didn't forward thing. He was saying something about all engineers know is math. Never spoken to a goddamn person. He, he was upset. I feel like this person might what be What did from- he rant about? What did he go on? What, what was he mad about? What I, math? Well, he was mad that they had to tear down a go train station because of a duh, idiot decision made like 30, 40 years ago. Right. Well, anyway. Who thought that was a good decision uh, no one will ever live east of oshawa Dude, never for, for anybody that has no idea what steve's talking about oshawa is far from toronto you get to where steve and i used to grow up and that takes about 40 minutes um on an average day you get to oshawa it's taking you an hour if it's a yeah. if, if it's the middle of the night you can get to oshawa in 40 minutes driving <laughs> if you freaking gun it yeah so <laughs> not that i've done it so the thing is is that at the at the go train and steve you you've already told this story but they built the train on they built the train station on the tracks so at o- the end Osh of the tracks was, yeah osh was the last stop the tracks stop so the natural thing you do is prepare plant- for the city to grow bigger and build around the tracks right why do that when you can build a 1970s rickety piece of bullshit yeah. behind the track <laughs> So it stops there. So because the city won't grow any bigger than that. The dumbest. The dumbest. The, the hey, dumbest you got something thing. else? Uh, we can move on to the press conference if you'd like. Let's do it. First question. First question is from Adam Wilde. Okay. First question is, gentlemen, we've been tweeted this a couple times, and I don't know if we have an answer on this, but Spotify now has their own podcast section. Mm-hmm. So question oh. is, when can we get on that? Uh, do we have any problems with that? Soon. I, don't, I, don't, I don't use I probably, Spotify. We'll probably do it today. We're on Google Play. We'll be on it today is right. the announcement. Congratulations. Steve Dangle now, Podcast is now on Spotify. Now on Spotify. Claps. Poetry snaps. Poetry snaps, everybody. Um, all right. Find us on Google Play, iTunes, and now Spotify. Uh, Jesse, what else? Um, most upvoted question from Reddit today is, what happened today at Bill's practice? <laughs> <laughs> a quarterback whose number is divisible by the power of 10 mm. uh, threw a pass to a receiver who dropped it, but we can't tell you who. Team continues to wear red, white, and blue after Memorial Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. I like that. Uh, okay. rem- remains patriotic and undefeated. Do you guys want to choose your starter Pokemons for the new Pokemon Sun and Moon? They have what? They have the new starter Pokemons. I, I need to see the new... I need to I be need to introduced. So, oh, all right, do we have stats okay, on Okay, we have Pop- Jaken. Populio. 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 So he's Italian, so Steve Pop-Leo. has to pick him. And it's, it's a... It's a sea uh, lion. Looks like a, a seal water. made love to a happy dog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In right. the Middle Ages. All right. It's so got a little... From the circus. Yeah, That's the water yeah from one. the circus. Okay. So the fire dude is Lin- Litten? Oh, he's kind of badass. Litten? It's a lit kitten. So it's Litten? <laughs> Yo, this lit- kitten is lit. <laughs> Yo, it's a lit kitten. <laughs> I might have to take him. I don't know. That looks... Litten. See, that looks like a parody Pokemon. <laughs> like, that's and then something- the grass one is Roulette. I love that... <laughs> Are you sure? Are we sure these aren't characters from the South Park Pokemon episode? <laughs> are we? Are we sure? <laughs> Sun and Moon. Are you sure? This is Pokemon Sun and Moon. All right. So Rolet is, is Rolet a, a flying slash plant type. He's a grass Pokemon. Yeah, yeah but he yeah, also yeah. flies. He does fly. Oh, yeah, he flies. Um, and his ability is to overgrow. Yep. See, if mm. my Pokemon memory uh, uh, is correct, I should be able to teach this Pokemon fly and cut. Yes. So I think I'm going to have to go with Rowlet, even though I would usually go with a water starter. I normally oh. went with a water starter too, but because Litten is badass, 
Because <laughs> its name is Litten. Because somebody who creates Pokemon has a sense of humor. Uh, I'm going with Litten. That's a badass looking Pokemon. Would you change its name, though, to It's Litten? <laughs> <laughs> Go, It's Litten! <laughs> it's yes. Litten just performed Blaze. Who... <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Blake, everyone. Jesse Blake. Oh my God, that was great. That was great. Who did not name Gary Oak a terrible name? Oh, by right. the way, what's that? <laughs> when you could choose the name for Gary? Yeah. <laughs> <You're>, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Assface was here a moment ago. <laughs> yeah. He took a Bulbasaur. <laughs> That means you should take whatever's weak against a Bulbasaur. <laughs> oh no, Assface has challenged you to a duel! <laughs> Assface has sent out Venusaur. <laughs> what else do we have, Jesse? Uh, um, who blew it worse? This is kind of a morbid question. Um, OKC, the Marlies, or the Raptors? OKC. Yeah, OKC... For all day, every day. Every okay. single time. I mean, you enter any playoff series, uh, it's a it's a brand new series. Yes, and, and... That's what it is. The thing was, it's like, yeah, Marlies were first place all season. Yep. Raptors didn't blow it. Raptors were playing with house money. Mm-hmm. No one wasn't expecting... No. Nobody went into the playoffs expecting the Raptors to make the Eastern Conference Final. See? No, that's where the expectation should have been, and then we got there. And we we got there. blown out. So you're, you're playing with and, house money. Yeah. And we didn't get blown out. It was 4-2. We got two wins. See, everyone was telling me... Yeah, house money, but they finished second. Yeah, the second but, but, place team yeah, should make the Eastern Conference that, Final. Yeah. Remember that the the way the Raptors style plays is not necessarily playoff friendly, as we saw, right? Well, I, I and guess. also their their stars were like, like, like they were really bad in the really, first really uh, round and a half or so. Um, so yeah, uh, what I was going to say was I feel like OKC really blew it because they finished second, did they not? Mm-hmm. But what they had. Was a three to one series lead? No, San Antonio did. OKC was third place team. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay, you're third place, but you still have Durant and Westbrook. Yep. And, and it's, three games to one lead over the Golden State Warriors. You had one game. You had to win one game of four. Three. Three games. Yeah. Three. Okay, so you had to win one of three. Yeah. And you didn't. You couldn't even do that. And you won three games before that, so you what knew happened? you could beat the team. What happened? You blew it. Is what happened. You blew it. And that's going to hurt. You blew it! Now, I actually do wonder, and I know I started jokingly saying, I can't wait till Durant, Durant's a Raptor. Apparently, if he goes anywhere, it's going to be San Antonio or... Or, uh, <sighs> apparently, Golden State might get him, too. That's mm-hmm. so unfair. That would be just stupid. That's so unfair. Uh, but does he want to go there and be third fiddle to Clay Thompson and Steph Curry? Or do you... Yeah, do but you, you can win he, all the championships. Cares? I don't think he cares. Kevin I don't think any cool of the guys on that team care. You got egos. Did it? Did I ever show you that weird article about like how that team just kind of unanimously um, ostracized the media? Oh yeah, yeah. It's we talked weird. about that. Yeah, it's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, weird setup there. Russell Westbrook doesn't like that whole talking thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, whatever. Seems like kind of a dick. Um, <laughs> Kevin Durant could leave OKC, although I don't think he will. I think he'll sign one more year and then he'll get his max thirty-five million dollar contract next year. God, what a life. Give it one more shot, but. It would be interesting to see if he did leave yep. what amazing team he goes to because this is the thing. This is why the NBA free agency is so interesting this year. The the, the cap money available is available to every team, mm-hmm. not just the bad teams. So you you you've got you've got a bunch of teams that are already amazing who can now spend max dollars on another superstar. And there's a couple superstars, DeRozan being one of them, although you could argue whether he was a superstar or not, and Durant for sure, who is a superstar, a marketable video game superstar going up. (laughs) And LeBron. And LeBron. Yeah. I mean, he's not, I don't think he's going anywhere, right? No, he's not. He'll sign in Cleveland. Safe to say, whoever gets Durant is probably the championship favorite. If he goes to the Spurs. If he stays in OKC, they're not. No. No. But if he goes to the Spurs, like how right. do they lose? I don't if know. If he goes to Golden State, how the hell do they lose? He could also go in, go to L.A. They L.A. wants DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Durant. That'd be and a they, hell of a summer. And they would do it. That'd be a hell of a summer. $50 million in two players. Woo! Hey. A year. It's the NBA, though. Yeah. You need two guys. Two guys surround him with competent bums. Rest in peace, Patrice O'Neal. And then there's a championship. Damn. So true. So yeah. true. Um, Jesse, is that it Nothing for us? Nothing left. 
Nothing nope. left. We're all over. Steve? Yes. Uh, do we have any articles or videos or anything to look out for you? For, 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 for uh, I'm out. Uh, if, From you. Same. I go same. Oh, I'm going to chronicle. Jesse's going to leave. Later, Jesse. <laughs> okay, we'll pick you up after. Let's... I don't know if you heard What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to chronicle my journey uh, to Pittsburgh because there's more detail and, and just my feelings of the whole thing got kind of emotional um, before the game started. So I'm going to be talking all about that, include some social media things, thoughts. Um, so that'll happen. I might take a nap first because I'm freaking, t- I'm just dying. I'm just dying. Um, I want to do a video after every game of the Stanley Cup final. The struggle there is it's already quarter after two the day after they've played, and then I got to go home, and then I got to make this video. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, And I did want to say a few things. Sharks fans, holy shit, Uh, there were a lot of you in Pittsburgh. I think it was reported that there wasn't. I think Pittsburgh did a really good job of covering the whole uh, arena in yellow, but there were a lot of Sharks fans there, and a lot of them were from California. So you, uh, you should be very proud. And you were all wearing, uh, or many of you were wearing the jersey of marketable superstar Joe Pavelski on your back. So that was pretty cool, I thought. What, Adam? Mm-hmm. Nothing? I'm just listening. Just a gorgeous smile? Yeah, that's it. Listen yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, and if you don't get to this video, I think we can understand. I think you can just... <sighs> Or maybe instead of chronicling your journey, do it through video. Do it through the video form. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm beyond the point of even making sentences. Yeah. This morning, it, yeah, it was technically this morning. So it's three. And I call the hotel. I'm like, hi, I'd like to ask for a wake-up call. They're like, sure. And for what time? I go, uh, 6.30. And the guy just laughs. He goes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, yeah. we're going to wrap it up. We will be back Thursday uh, or Friday if, if you're downloading the next day. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Steve, get some sleep. Mm. Can't wait to see your article and how emotional you actually do get. I'll, Tears I'm were probably shed. probably going to cry. Tears were shed. Yeah. Steve, I hope you can recover from the hard days you've had in the past couple of weeks. It's been pretty difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like I kept getting weighed down by all the free things people were giving me too. Mm-hmm. Um, also remember that Alberta hates you. So <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Along with Pens and Sharks fans. Uh, final question. <laughs> final question for, for the press conference right. uh, comes from Steve. Um, hmm. Alberta, what the fuck? <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> Why do you hate me? They don't hate you. Why does they Alberta don't. hate me? They don't. Listen, I, I get it. They have their teams out there. Not everyone can love the Leafs. <laughs> okay. Should. Not even we can love the Leafs they're most of the time. <laughs> oh, you know what we like never or, or we didn't talk about at all? Phil Kessel. So many Penguins fans. I would say he was number two behind Crosby in terms of uh, jerseys and jerseys they saw. You know, like we even never, ahead of Malkin. You know, what we never bring up anymore. What? Fuck Shane. You know what? Hey guys, can we just wrap it up? <laughs> can we just can we just end this, please? No, 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 no. 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 We haven't dedicated oh, nearly on. enough time to fuck Shane. Hold um, on a second. Why is Shane from Alberta? <laughs> Can we talk about that? All right. We're going to wrap it up. Goodbye. And we'll get on Spotify, too. Hold on, Steve. No, bye. No, no, no. I need, I need to hear this. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.